thing. So D Hall, so talking about the flaws. So give us one of those flaws that you had in your game that you felt you had to work on during your career. I wasn't much of a backpedaler. T.O. Talk was talking about my butt to the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Uh, in college, I just wasn't taught to backpedal more. Right. And so when you are running those kind of intermediate routes, when your shoulder's square and you're coming out your backpedal, it's a lot easier to break on some things sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. as yep. well as with your hips cocked. Obviously, with your hips cocked, butt to the sideline, you you up. ready for that fade ball all day, right? You ready to mm-hmm. go front. Yeah. You're already opened up. You don't have to backpedal from a square position, then turn mm-hmm. your you already turned. And so because in college we played such a funky defense at Virginia Tech, I mean, literally our cover two fellows was the two corners would play half field. The safeties would walk down from top, bottom, and yep. hell, I thought that was cover two. I, when I got to the right. two, I'm like, what you mean? This right. <laughs> that's not our two. That's y'all two. All I got to do is <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. And so we never really pedaled. And so, you know, that was a big flaw, flaw of mine. It wasn't really till – I got with Raheem Morris, probably mm. year five or six, um, okay. that he really made me trust and believe in in that straight pedal because I was able to read so much more stem and just kind of, you know, I was it was easy for me to adjust um, mm-hmm. the route combinations as opposed to, you know, as a DB, the only ball you're really scared of is that fade ball. So right. always with them hips cocked because I'm like, man, I am, look, I know I can run, but these dudes can run too. Right, right, yeah. They can all run in the lead. That's for sure. Right. So, so you're saying so with your speed and your instincts. Um, I know right now you're, you're tied. Uh, you tied the NFL record for interception in 2010 with four interceptions off Jay Cutler in one game. Is that? <laughs> and, and yeah, like I, dude. That's for to me. That's re- bro. That's like scoring five or six touchdowns as a receiver in a game. In a game. Yeah. What, how? Is that is that film study? Is that instincts? Or it was just one of those days where again, you feeling like you're that dude and there's nothing he could throw at me that's gonna beat me. It's a little bit of it's a little bit of both. It was a combination, um, a little background. When Jay Cutler was in Denver with Mike Shanahan, and I was in Oakland for the eight games I was in Oakland for. Right. We played Denver that on, on the first Monday night when they do the double hitter. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Had this little quick receiver from Virginia Tech named Eddie Royal. Eddie uh, Royal. Yep. I knew Eddie. Love Eddie. Still talk to Eddie to this day. And when I tell you Mike Shanahan ran every man beater known because he knew mm-hmm. Al Davis ain't playing nothing but man. Right. D Hall, you get one side, non squad, <laughs> you get the other side. Right. You know, half a route, you get the slot. Mike Huff was one of the safeties, Jabril Wilson. I mean, we had a hell of a defense. Mm-hmm. But when you when your quarterback is Jamarcus Russell, it was kind of hard to put points on the board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but to go back to that. Nate so Cutler was that quarterback in that game, and Eddie Royal might have caught seven or eight balls, probably five or six on me. I'm talking T whip motion, you know what I mean, on third and two, and I'm mm-hmm. as a corner oh. got to follow, and he just zoomed to the flat. So I'm like, bro, coach, we 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 can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I and Jay Cutler, I've never asked Jay this question because I, you know, I, I ain't really cool with Jay. But I guarantee, if anybody asked him <laughs> why he kept going at me, right? I'll tell you because two years ago I lit his, I lit him up, you know, and that was, ah. and so I kind of understood that all week in practice. I knew how cocky he was. I knew how he thought. Oh man, mm-hmm. absolutely. I'm, I'm gonna light I'm gonna him do up. it again. Yeah, and so all when right. people didn't know that game. It was all in the second half, T. And in the first half, wow. I don't even know if I got any action in the first half. I don't wow. Know I did. It was just a back and forth, a lot of turnovers in that game. Hell, I had four picks myself. I want to say uh, Albert Hainsworth had a, had a sack, fumble recovery or something on the goal line to stop them from scoring. Wow. I think Pep ran one back, maybe. Not Pep. Yeah, I think Pep was on that team. No, no, Pep wasn't on that team. Erlacher ran one back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Right. I mean, it was literally a whole lot of back and forth. You talked about Donovan. We had Donovan as our quarterback that game. And mm-hmm. boy, he was that, that, that didn't last long. That he didn't last long. Man, he was giving it up. And so <laughs> literally in that second half, man, I just felt like it wasn't a shot. I mean, I felt like I was playing ball, man. I was a big basketball player growing up. And so, you know, I've been on that court where I'm in the zone, man, where it mm-hmm. don't matter. I'm coming down on fast break, pulling up. And, All right. Uh, like that, bro. Like Devin Hester ran a route, and he quick as hell. 
And somehow I'm beat them out his break, dive and pick, got the first one. Second one, they call it all out blitz. I'm in the huddle, like, man, are you kidding me? Why are we call it all out blitz? <laughs> right. On, on third and like six on the 18 yard line. Them coming in. Jay throws a ball just behind Johnny Knox. I pick it off one hand, take it back. Mm-hmm. We in two man, he throws a slant to me. Like and then <laughs> Prevent defense, and he just throw one up. Like five, I'll take that too. Uh, and so some of it was me being in the zone. Some of it was trash quarterback. But I mean, hell, I take it. My mom was in the stands that game. Yeah, I, I got to give her every ball after, and that <laughs> it was super dope, man. Super. Oh dope. wow! If I could have got Jay That's Cutler awesome. a couple more times, man. I might, I might, I might have me a gold jacket when. <laughs> Hey, you might get one anyway. It's all good. (laughs) That's tough, bro. That's big. Again, four (laughs) picks in one game. Again, I. That's amazing. We almost talking about four picks in one game, and we lost. I'm just glad we won. Yeah, yeah, that would be all bad. I know, right? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's that's all bad. But like, too. So again, like I said, talk about. I want to. You know, you said went to Atlanta, right? Early draft pick. the Oakland scenario. What happened? Because again, you were still trending up in your career, and then yeah. the Oakland scenario happened. What what did happen in Oakland anyway? Well, what happened really in Atlanta? What was stem stemmed in Atlanta that sent me to Oakland was you know everyone knows what happened with Michael Vick and 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 the dog fighting and you know mm-hmm. all those kind of uh, allegations. And I think when, when we brought in a new new coach, uh, which was Mike Smith at the time, he was the Jaguars D coordinator yep. um, in the Jack Del Rio. Uh, they love me. I, you know, I remember the draft process, Jacksonville saying they were going to draft me if I, you know, if I made it to, to that pick and I ended up going to pick right before. Um, and so I knew the coaching staff loved me. Uh, Michael Vick had just got paid two years, mm-hmm. two years left on his contract. Me and Mike had the same agent. And so the and you and Mike also played at Virginia Tech together, of course. Yeah, college the plan teammates. was always to get me paid with one year left on my deal. Um, Rich McKay moved from the GM spot to the president spot, brought in uh, Thomas Dimitrov from New England to be the GM. And, you know, Dimitrov, I'm like, look, we kind of had already talked about getting the deal done. I'm supposed to be the face of the defense. Obviously, now we're going in another direction because there's no Mike anymore. And mm. so, you know, we're, we're going to have to draft a quarterback, which they end up doing with Matt Ryan. I was supposed to, you know, help, help, help solidify that defense. And, you know, Mike or Thomas Dimitrov said, if Mike Smith tells me he wants you, we'll get the deal done. So I go into Smitty office because that's how I am. Hey, Smitty. We good. Right. Full transparency. Hey, Smitty, he over yeah. here telling me if you want me, you go. <laughs> All right. Smitty grabs me. We walk to Dimitrov's office and Smitty like, bro, I need him. I want him. He is the best player on our team. Wow. And I find out two weeks later, they're trying to shop me at the combine. Wow. Like, yeah. Wow. They don't bang the knees, you know. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a. At that time, I'm a two-time Pro Bowler, and I'm 24 years old. Um, Trending up, right? You know, got got a year left on my deal. Why would you not want to lock me up? Right. And you know, mm-hmm. and, and being so young and immature, you know, if I had to do it all over again, maybe I'd have took a deep breath and 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 and, and chose a different path. But you know, I was committed, man. I was committed to to my path and my value and my worth. And I didn't feel like I was, yeah. Getting, in, in you know in Atlanta, and I knew the Oakland deal was kind of trash because if you saw it on paper, it looked like a one year deal. And my agent was like, "Man, they can, you know, they can they can turn that deal up after one year, and you won't mm. get eighteen million dollar bonus next year." I'm like, end of the day, Atlanta was paying me five; they paying me nine. I don't, mm-hmm. care. I'll go out you know what I mean? If that happens, yeah. they, right. you know, God rest his soul. He was. There's no way we're gonna cut you a trade or anything. We're giving up two draft picks for you and all this. Right. And, you know, middle of the season, or not middle of the season, maybe five, six games in the season when we ain't won but one or two games. Right. You know, he sat me down and he was just like, look, I'm either going to have to ask for a pay cut or we're going to have to cut you. You were the last guy to get paid. Mm. And I think it's only right for us to renegotiate. And I'm like, nah, you must be like, we'll renegotiate next year. I right. thought a big bonus. But that's when I figured out that re- bonuses aren't really bonuses in the NFL. It's right. Not- <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's not like baseball. Um, and not guaranteed. After eight games and ended up in D.C., man. And, you know, it ended up being ended up being the best thing for me, man. It was close to home. I mm-hmm. had the tech fan base that kind of just embraced me open arms. 
because you you know you were right. I was trending up, and then with that whole Oakland situation, everybody felt like, well, he must have done something wrong. Right, right, of course. And, you know, at that point, my whole goal was just to prove that I can still play corner, that mm-hmm. I'm still an elite corner. Because no one, no, it didn't make sense. Why, why, why did right. they pay? like they just paid you seventy million? Right. Right. You had to been an asshole. You had to. You had to. And I'm like, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, mm-hmm. since I was the last one to get paid, I should be the first one to get my money back. And mm-hmm. I said, I ain't giving my money back. You you can just cut me. And that's what he did. <laughs> wow, that's, that's <laughs> right. lie. So, so then after that, you went to Washington. You still made a Pro Bowl in Washington. And then, of course, you know, as you probably got longer in the tooth, right, your career started getting toward the end. You switched from corner to safety to kind of get you a couple years in. How was that transition, again, because that very confident – uh, corner, I can lock down anybody saying, okay, we need you, but we need you at safety means you can't play corner anymore. How'd that transition go for you mentally? You know what? I actually initiated the, the move to safety. Nice. Um, and through my first 11 years in the league, you know, I, I, I didn't get hurt much, didn't have any surgeries. Um, and then I had an Achilles one year and I was able to come back, play corner the wow. next year. Uh, tough. But that next year I ended up having like turf toe where I, I, I mean, I almost tore that, almost tore that, that tendon down there. Tendon. To, mm-hmm. And it was so hard for me to break aggressively like a corner mm-hmm. and safety. I could teach them. I mean, I was out there playing safety. Gosh, maybe three, three weeks before they, <clears throat> excuse me, probably three weeks before they let me actually, you know, play in a game because I'm like, bro, I'm like, I feel good at safety, but whenever I went to corner, I just couldn't, I just couldn't mm. drive off my foot like I wanted to. Um, and, you know, obviously seeing C. Wood, you know, make the move and mm-hmm. him telling me they were going to be able to use me like that. Never got an interception at safety. And I'm like, I'm thinking I'm going to be Ed Reed out there. Okay. <laughs> get, you know, I, got, I got 40 in the corner. Maybe I can get 10, 15 at safety. Right, right. That never happened, man. I, you know, no quarterback wanted to throw it deep because they knew I was a ball guy. So, Ended up making more tackles and getting more headaches than actually making any plays. <laughs> so, love watching how C. Wood ended up always in the perfect defense to let him do whatever he wanted to do. Lying. <laughs> right. Right. The perfect defense to let him jump everything. Right. Being straight man on man. That's to my funny. tongue falling out of my mouth, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't want you don't you wouldn't want to have it any other way though. You know what I'm saying? Had a great career, you know. Like I said, it's you got records in the NFL. You had a great career. You got money in the bank. Like you're a blessed individual, young fellow. Absolutely, I appreciate it. 